Hey everyone, this is Klaus from Plant Based News. Today I've got the amazing opportunity to interview the author of this book called How Not to Age, Dr. Michael Greger. Um, ahead of the interview, I asked the chat GBT to list out the 10 most commonly cited strategies to reverse aging and increase longevity. And in this video, Dr. Greger fact checks ChatGPT. I hope you enjoy. Dr. Greger, thank you so much for doing this. So what I want to do is go through 10 things ChatGBT brings up as uh, methods and strategies to increase longevity and reverse aging. So uh, you're going to be the fact checker. Okay. One of the things ChatGBT said is moderate alcohol consumption. Does this help longevity? Ah, outrageous. Now that's total bullshit. So that's what you used to think. And so, you know, I think ChatGPT is a few years back. I don't know how, but yeah, so we used to think uh, so uh, there's something called the famous J-curve, um, where the people that lived the longest, the lowest overall mortality, were not the teetotalers at zero, but were actually those who had moderate alcohol consumption. The reason many people aren't drinking is because they got sick. So the reason that, you know, uh, that, that so-called non-drinkers have higher cir liver cirrhosis rates than people who drink, how does that make any sense? Ah! Why they're not drinking? Because they got liver cirrhosis, right? So it's this reverse causation. If you actually just look at true lifelong abstainers, ah, and you, and you, and you remove that statistical artifact, the so-called sick quitter effect, the reason why sometimes people that quit smoking actually die sooner than those that continue to smoke, it's because smoking made them, that's why they quit, it's because they got a horrible disease. If you control for the sick quitter effect, then you just see a straight line increase with more alcohol, the more disease, and with no apparent protection from a low intake. So alcohol is a carcinogen, increases the risk of cancer, um, and so ideally the optimum amount of alcohol is zero. Chat GPT is wrong. So number two, uh, praying and meditation. Do these help longevity? I don't know where Chat GPT is getting this from. Maybe Dr. Ornish. Oh, well, so, well, oh, I mean, Ornish doesn't talk about praying. Um, uh, so, uh, but, uh, so. Mindfulness. I mean, the longest lived population in the world right now is the Seventh day Adventist vegetarians whose religiosity makes them, you know, consider their body as a temple. And so the religion, in their case, is actually getting them to smoke less and to move more and to eat plant based diets. Uh, and so it's not the praying per se, but their religiosity is making them, you know, uh, have better lifestyles. So mm -hmm. it's no, no direct um, uh, benefit. Though uh, the meditation literature is interesting. So if you look at some aging indicators like telomere length, uh, which is one of the uh, anti-aging pathways I talk about in the book, long-term meditators, those who have tens of thousands of hours of meditation under their belt, do tend to have longer telomeres which is a kind of a proxy for slowed cellular aging compared to non meditators The problem is that's an observational study, right? You didn't randomize people to meditate for tens of thousands of hours or not. I mean, so there's many, so is it the meditation itself or is there something about people who meditate that makes them more likely to have healthier lifestyle characteristics? So, you know, uh, you know uh, if you look at like meditation teachers, at least half of them are eating plant-based diet. And so, well, no problem. I mean, no wonder you look at the, at the health indices of, of long-term meditators. Well, of course, they're going to be doing better if they're eating healthier. Mm -hmm. um, and so short-term interventional trials do not show this benefit. Um, uh, so you randomize people to meditate for a few hours, and you actually don't see any kind of slowing of aging. But look, critics of that literature can be like, yeah, well, obviously, a few hours isn't going to do anything. Um, and we just don't have those long-term interventional studies to really prove cause and effect with meditation. Look, but it can have other benefits. Stress reduction, you know, also, so I'm not, you know, nothing against, uh, but in terms of longevity, you're gonna live longer if you meditate, um, something that uh, we have not yet established. I don't necessarily think it's about the praying, but I think maybe what it's getting at, as Dean Ornish said, is uh, purpose. Because I think it goes without saying what we're doing keeps us going every day, right? And gives us that motivation to just keep on doing what we're doing. Oh, I mean, it, keeps, it gets me up in the morning. It keeps me going. But whether it's going to keep me going on the planet Earth is yet to be decided. So number three, according to ChatGPT, is quality sleep. What's your take? 
Oh, well, that's, that's, that's actually one of the surprises um, I ran into in the book. And so not necessarily. Um, so actually, those who sleep more than nine hours um, a night actually live shorter lives than those who sleep se um, less than seven hours a night or less than five hours a night. But, of course, you can imagine these as observational data. It's not like we're randomizing people to sleep different hours. And you can imagine the confounding factors. Who sleeps long? People without a job. So maybe the lower socioeconomic status. People who are depressed. People who are sick, not getting out of bed. So you can see it could be, you know, reverse causation, right? Um, but there certainly are benefits to get it. So you can, there is interventional cause and effect evidence of sleeping, particularly when it comes to immunity. So you can ran, so you can you know drip cold virus, rhinovirus into people's noses, and if they've been getting uh, more than seven hours of sleep a night, they are five times less likely to come down with a cold than those sleeping less than five hours a night. They all 100% got infected. They literally had the virus dripped in their nose. But most of the people who were getting enough sleep didn't even have a sniffle, didn't even experience anything because their immune system so whacked the virus that they didn't even you know have any symptoms at all. Um, and so um, the reason perhaps that may actually not translate into longevity is, you know, pneumonia typically falls down kind of the second half of the top 10 killers. Um, uh, and so it just may kind of kind of wash out. Uh, but so absolutely all for getting enough sleep. But whether it's going to make you live longer is in definitely an unanswered research question. And if anything, the, the opposite seems to be the case. Number four, according to ChatGBT, uh, limiting calorie intake. Does this help longevity? Well, so it certainly does in, in rodents. Um, uh, so, uh, and, but the, the benefits of calorie restriction appear to be due to protein restriction. So, so you're cutting down their diets, and so it has, it's not the fact that they're cutting down on calories eating smaller portions, but that they're actually getting less protein. In fact, specific amino acids like methionine found actually concentrated in animal products. So it's reducing these, uh, uh, reducing excess protein intake that is actually um, appears to be uh, responsible for the longevity in the few kind of rodent models where you see this benefit. You don't see it across the board in animals. Um, you don't even see it across the board in rodents. Um, uh, and so whether or not this is actually going to translate into people, um, we're not sure. There was a randomized control trial over years called the calorie trial, which showed extraordinary benefits of people restricting calories, even 12%. That's like skipping a piece of pie every day. But these were normal weight individuals. In the United States, normal weight means overweight. So there are overweight people losing weight, restricting calories. Of course, they're going to have benefits. But so it doesn't necessarily inform us whether someone who's actually ideal weight, restricting calories for, further, whether that's going to help or not. What about regular exercise, regular physical activity? Surely this is correct. Surely this is correct. Actually, it's extremely controversial in the medical literature whether physical activity is actually going to make you live longer or whether it's just the genetic predisposition to exercise that actually makes you live longer. And how you determine that is uh, you take identical twins, same genetics, um, and one vigorously exercises, the other not. So who's going to live longer? Obviously the person vigorously exercises, and it's not true. It doesn't come out that way. So it's a genetic predisposition. So people that exercise absolutely live longer. But is it the exercise, or is it the fact these genetic predisposition to exercise that does it? And that actually may be the case. However, what's not controversial is the extraordinarily health span benefits of exercise. Decreasing your risk, I mean, exercise improves so many aspects of one's health, but whether it's actually going to make you live longer is surprisingly controversial. Number six, telomere extension treatments. So telomere extension treatments, what is the telomere extension treatment? The first time we ever saw an extension of telomeres was Dr. Dean Orange, along with Elizabeth Blackburn, who got a Nobel Prize in Medicine for her discovery of this enzyme that actually extended um, one's telomeres. How do you boost that enzyme and actually translate out that into longer telomeres? A plant-based diet and lifestyle is the first thing ever shown to be able to do that. Um, and uh, so that's one of the ways that we can slow down cellular aging is by eating healthy. Next up, intermittent fasting. Oh, that's really interesting. Do you give any credibility to the idea that this increases longevity? Um, so there was a study uh, about 50 years ago that uh, randomized individuals in Spain in a senior center to uh, kind of have uh, alternate day modified fasting. 
And those randomized to that group did, um, didn't live longer, but did have significantly lower hospitalization rates. However, it's not clear whether or not the person running the study, who was the head of the senior center, was the one who decided who went to the hospital or not, and maybe, whether consciously or unconsciously, um, uh, that could have introduced bias into the study. Because I think it's, it's pretty common a judgment from society that if you intermittent fast, it's good for health and good for, for longevity, no? Well, I mean, we just don't have good data. I right. mean, but, but you can definitely get benefits from early time restricted feeding, for example, restricting one's daily feeding window to 12 hours or less, and ideally, that's earlier rather than later. If we skip any meal, we're skipping supper, not breakfast. Ideally, breakfast or lunch would be the biggest meal of the day. We should try to shove as many calories earlier in the day as possible. For health span benefits, thanks to our circadian rhythms, but we don't have uh, data on longevity yet. Okay, next one is gonna be interesting. The ketogenic diet for brain aging. It says the claim that high fat, low carbohydrate, ketogenic diet can improve cognitive function and slow down brain aging. Is this true? Maybe chat GPT needs something for their brain. Um, yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's ridiculous. I mean, so if you have, you know, intractable pediatric epilepsy, which is resistant to drugs, I mean, there are certain medical conditions in which ketogenic diets can be helpful, but of course they suffer these horrible health consequences of being put on ketogenic diets, but if the alternative is seizing all day, then you can, you know, certainly justify it. But yeah, it makes absolutely no difference. If we want to protect our mind, we want to protect against cognitive decline, protect against dementia, there's a reason why people who eat plant-based diets long-term up to three times less likely to become demented later in life is because what's good for our heart is good for our heads because the buildup of atherosclerotic plaque in our intracranial arteries, our arteries in our head, plays a development, plays a role in the development of Alzheimer's disease. In fact, what is the Alzheimer's gene, APOE4? It is the primary cholesterol carrier inside the brain. There's something called the Nigerian paradox, where they have the high, well, among the highest rates of Alzheimer's gene, some of the lowest rates of Alzheimer's disease. How is that possible? Genes load the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. There are low rates of Alzheimer's due to low cholesterol levels, thanks to the diet low in animal fat. We can prevent Alzheimer's disease um, uh, by um, a variety of things, uh, decreasing risk by avoiding head trauma, et cetera, et cetera. But in terms of diet, centering our diets around whole plant foods, particularly berries and greens. Well, next up is legume consumption. Is this correlated with longer life? Jeez. Thank you, ChatGPT. We finally got something here. The blue zone. So only about 25% of the difference in lifespan between people based on studies of identical twins is to do with genetics. So what can we do over the majority which we have some control? The blue zones, these areas of extraordinary longevity around the world, they have up to 10 times the rate of centenarians. Those are reached to be 100. What do they all share in common? They center their diets around whole plant foods and with legumes, the primary source of protein. And finally, number 10, ChatGPT does acknowledge that a plant-based diet uh, can contribute to reversing aging. Nice! Is that 100% correct? It's 100%, not only, um, do people eating healthier live longer, but can actually slow down aging? We have both observational evidence and interventional data. We take hundreds of people, randomize them to either a diet centered around plant foods or to exercise or to nothing. And though sadly exercise didn't alone did not slow down the rate of aging. Those randomized the plant-based dietary inter intervention group had a significant slowing of biological aging. And in less than one minute, can you just convince anybody watching this that one of the most effective things that they can do to increase longevity and reverse aging um, is to adopt a plant-based diet? Look, the good news is we have tremendous power over our health testing and longevity. The vast majority of premature death and, di is, and disability is preventable with a plant-based diet um, and, uh, and healthy lifestyle. And why is that the case? Well, because um, we're slowing down each of the 11 pathways of aging, which I talk about in part one, we are adopting the diet that's, uh, that's associated with longevity, um, uh, according to the Blue Zones, 150 dietary surveys. And then in part three of the book, talk about pre uh, preservation, preserving our eyesight and our vision and our teeth and our sex life and our skin and our immune function. Um, uh, and uh, we can go through all of those and talk about the role healthy plant-based diets can improve our health span and lifespan. Thank you.